Good evening. How's it going out there, everyone? Welcome back here to a Monday night, 10.22 p.m. That's California time here, August 25th, 2025. Latest activity here shows a, uh, looks like a 2.7 across the area of the Mediterranean. Uh, got a little bit of larger activity out there just outside the Italy area earlier this evening as well, 4.8. Earthquake just off the plate boundary. Also a little cluster going on here across the China area, north of Nepal. Uh, we do have to watch this cluster or this uh, subduction zone here. The Himalayas, obviously a major area where there's um, uh, convergence going on with the India plate and the Eurasia plate here. Got uh, a decent uh, push up going on there across the Nepal area in this mountain range. Uh, I want to show you guys the historical data here across the area. Far as 7.0 and above goes uh, for, for uh, well, at least since history has been uh, uh, written down, according to the USGS. Uh, a lot of large-scale earthquake activity out here. Quite a few sevens, including an eight-pointer back in 1934 along that plate boundary. One thing I am noticing here, similar to what we've seen there in the uh, Curl Cam Chatka Trench, with the lack of activity historically, uh, is this region right about here. Look at that huge seismic gap in terms of larger movement. Doesn't mean they haven't seen any sixes or maybe even uh, mid six or upper six out here, but anything above 7.0, there's nothing out here. Uh, so we do have to watch that because it is capable of producing some larger earthquakes out here across that area with the plate boundary. I have noticed uh, an uptick out here for sure. And that's just what the USGS is showing. There's been... Uh, uh, looks like some deeper activity in the area as well. Look at this 4.6 earlier uh, this evening, 180 kilometers deep. That is not showing up here on the USGS. Let's see if that's going to be the quake that they want to report. So there's a little bit of difference there in terms of the depth of that magnitude. USGS showing that a very shallow 4.6 at 6 miles below the surface there. Uh, EMSC reporting that as a much deeper quake underneath the area. So either way, watch that region. It is a uh, in a zone that can see some large earthquake activity. Uh, there's that 6.1 here off the coast of the Kamchatka area earlier. Uh, that's from last night, early this morning time period. Since then, a 5.6, a little bit deeper, and also a 4.4, a little bit deeper. Look at that in the middle point boundary out here. So it's interesting to watch here. I'm, I'm not 100% certain that we are done with the large-scale activity out here. Uh, it only That 8.8 .8 here only partially released a strain out here across the area. So we do have to watch that, maybe for some larger adjustment uh, going on there across the Curl Cam Chatka Trench. Up into the Pacific Northwest, a couple earthquakes here being reported, including some there across the Mount St. Helens area. Uh, it does look like they added a couple here uh, in the last 24 hours. Also, uh, maybe even a little bit further back. Very small earthquakes there. Uh, let's go ahead and check out the um, earthquake activity across those volcanoes. By the way, 69 epicenters of tremor across the Cascadia subduction zone in the last 24 hours. Mount St. Helens, we'll go check this out here real quick and see what we have. A couple earthquakes there on the northeastern flank of that volcano. Uh, let's take a look here. See if there's anything to note. There's a couple of those earthquakes showing up in the last few hours or so. Uh, they're reporting, let's see, what are they reporting those? The last one, a little point one this afternoon. So that would be at 1515. Um... 1515 technically would probably be oh man maybe um this little small spike right here i don't think it's that one because that that one's previous to 1500 so what <laughs> what gives here or maybe it's this earthquake what about these bigger ones out here <laughs> that's that's what i'm wondering about there's something that looks a little bit bigger out here in terms of earthquake activity. Mount St. Helens has been kind of uh, on the uptick as well in terms of earthquake activity. Not as much as Mount Rainier, but we have noticed uh, the Cascade Volcano is showing some earthquake activity out here in the last couple months. Uh, let's go check out the Mount Rainier area. By the way, they're reporting, uh, let's see what they got up here. 
in the last 24 hours. Little, a little earthquake this morning, 0.3 at 7 o'clock this morning. So let's go compare that to the seismograph and see, uh, you know, let's take a look at the raw data here real quick. 7 o'clock this morning, so 7.24 in the morning, which would be, that would probably be this earthquake right here. All right. Uh, I, that's uh, one earthquake. Some of these do look like rock falls out here, the thicker drawn out readings. Earthquakes are going to be more defined, but uh, yeah, what do you, what do they do to the amplitude here? It almost looks like they've adjusted the amplitudes out here to uh, pick up maybe the rock falls because these are all different looking now. When did they kick this up? Something's changed out here in terms of the amplitudes or maybe the reading adjustment because what we're seeing here on these graphs, they do look... I would definitely look at those as rock falls, but they've... Um, They've changed out here. Something's changed. So maybe that's a good thing. Maybe not. Um, all I know is it doesn't look like what it looked like here a couple days ago uh, when there was more spikes on here. It, it almost looks like they've possibly increased the amplitudes out here. So... Um, yeah, but as far as any major earthquake activity goes, I don't see any major increase, but something's changed out there as far as the amplitude readings go. A couple earthquakes up around the Seattle area, mainly from this morning, out around the Seattle Fault northward. Do have to watch that. It is capable of producing some big earthquakes out there. Northern California, one earthquake this morning down in the southern end of the Cascadia Bay Area. Uh, some older movement there from this morning as well. Nothing really new to report. Um, Southern California and the West Coast out here has been relatively quiet. Nothing above 2.5 as far as the uh, magnitudes go. Uh, no major swarms down there across Southern California. No unusual activity. It's a little quiet period down there right now. Uh, Yellowstone National Park, a couple earthquakes this morning. So let's go double check over there as well. See if anything's uh, of uh, some noteworthy or newsworthy value. If they're going to work here, there we go. So we got, uh, there's that six pointer that struck, um, that was the, I believe that's a Russia earthquake, right? This morning, just after, just before midnight. Yes. So that would match that time period. That's a six pointer showing up in the uh, Russia area on Yellowstone National Park in Wyoming. So that shows that the seismograph station is working properly as far as picking up uh, some strong motion and whatnot. Earthquake activity here. Uh, a couple of earthquakes out here locally in the region. It does look like the USGS reported some of those earthquakes um, this morning, although there is a handful here this afternoon in, into the early evening hours. Uh, nothing big going on there for now. No major swarm at Yellowstone. Uh, oil fields out there of Texas still getting hammered with earthquake activity. Nothing going on across the new Madrid seismic zone couple more earthquakes out here in the new, in the uh, Greenwood South Carolina area that uh, brings up a total tally here of earthquakes in this region up to about 13 or so uh, the largest being a 3.0 earthquake very shallow earthquake activity um, it is in a zone that uh, can see some larger activity here we'll, we'll go check that out real quick see what we got here for the uh, movement down here across the Carolina region. I do like to take a look at these historical models just to see what uh, is possible in terms of uh, historical data goes here because we can learn a lot here from history. That can help us determine what may be uh, happening out here in the future. Across the Carolina region, uh, let's see, that would probably be, well, I'll just go ahead and go like that. That should should probably cover it. All right. This goes back to the year 1000. Doesn't mean it covers every single earthquake. I'm sure there's some that have not been um, picked up on. Let's see here. Earthquakes loading. That's a little odd. It takes so long here. But 
All right, we got 50 of them. So the uh, Carolina area down here in that zone of interest, southwest of where we're seeing the activity, well, yeah, southwest of where, where they're seeing the activity right now up around Greenwood area. Uh, near Hump Sumpner National Forest, it looks like, down to the southwest. Got uh, this activity down here, it looks like. Three earthquakes of uh, 4.3 and the 4.1 historically. Looks like to be the largest out here, but, you know, who's to say that there may be something else out here that has not been discovered? Charleston down here. Uh, South Carolina area has historically seen some bigger earthquakes. 7.0 back in 19 or 1886, excuse me. Something like that today underneath this area. Ooh, man, that'd be some widespread devastation out there for sure. Even a six pointer, but a seven pointer uh, would not be good. But uh, just goes to show you some, uh, some areas out here that uh, can see some earthquake activity, these intraplate regions away from the major stress in the plate boundaries out here can see earthquake activity, although it does take, you know, a couple hundred years or more um, for the uh, earthquake activity to occur, unlike, you know, like the West Coast. Uh, but by now we should have seen some larger activity out there, which it's a little scary out there across the West Coast region. That's uh I think when it hits, it's definitely going to be some big activity out here. All right, so let's see what we got here for worldwide activity. Of course, the largest is going to go to that 6.1 just before midnight. After midnight, looks like it's 5.6 down here. Pretty deep earthquake underneath the Fiji area. That is into the Tonga Trench. Um, as far as any subsequent adjustment following that deeper activity, quiet. Look at that absence of earthquake activity there across that region westward. New Zealand, what's going on down there? Nothing. Got some activity stirring up here in the last hour uh, around western Australia. Some newer activity, it looks like. Do got to watch this area around New Zealand here. I think it's fairly well strained and primed for some large activity. Another earthquake here across the... Uh, southwestern edge here of the Nankai Trough. Alaska pretty quiet for the most part. Uh, let's see here. I'm going to bring this down a little bit for some uh, some reason. I don't know. It looks a little absent of earthquake activity. Uh, there's that movement around the uh, Italy area, also 2.8, uh, what is that, 2.8, 2.7 coming around the uh, Italy area as well, it looks like. Like I say, we do need to watch this region out here, it's been uh, a little bit active. Still seeing some swarming going on there around the Turkey area. Uh, some movement south here around the uh, rift boundary. Got a 4.4 out there. So just kind of see what happens here. It's a little unusually quiet down here across this area right now. Deeper movement, yes, but no surface adjustment going on. I'll just kind of watch things here and see how it plays out. Uh, space weather activity. Well, ooh, look at that. Almost here to the X flare category. We got, well, Maybe not quite. That's a decent inflare right now, though. This is just a little sample, I think, here of what we're going to see coming up here in the coming week or so. Uh, a decent flare right now from that sunspot that's uh, currently facing the Earth. That's uh, a decent shot here, I think, for the thumbnail. So we'll go ahead and save that while we're at it. Um, moderate inflare somewhat earth directed it looks right now it's uh, somewhat impulsive in terms of the eruptive activity it's not drawn out far as like any subsequent cme being produced it's more of an impulsive flare uh, but we will watch that that's one area back over here on the southeastern quadrant of the sun uh, let's see it's a little slow tonight what's going on um, very active area also a big time region out here across center uh, equator area of the sun that uh, is a region we have to watch as well let's take a look here at the magnetogram image 
Uh, by the way, 41.99 is the big sunspot out there now, creeping around the eastern limb. The sunspot that's producing the M flare. Take a look at this here, 41.97. Look at all that inner mixing of magnetic complexity there. That's a very dynamic sweet looking sunspot that's the only word i can think of when it's super dynamic like that that's capable of producing maybe some x flare activity also this region back over here as well so we do have two major areas of concern when it comes to the flaring threat here um, i have my flare threat bumped at about 15 percent chance these guys are showing 10 percent uh m flare around uh, 55 i think it's a little bit more than that with these uh, regions here just see uh, some very interesting sunspots coming around. Uh, we are still getting hit with protons, it looks like, across the polar regions, uh, mainly northern. This result here across the uh, Asia area is a result of the M flare. They are currently facing the sun. So, of course, they're going to be um, affected by some of that um, flaring activity. Now, this type of... Um, activity on the earth facing earth facing side of the sun where it's sunlight right now uh, can affect high frequency uh, communication and low frequency navigation systems out here really nothing big is nothing like what you know we haven't seen in the past not like a huge x20 or 40 flare uh, but it is uh, increasing out here in in regards to the flare threat no major aurora activity for now across the um, three-day geomagnetic forecast, but that could change quickly here with these very, very active regions coming around the eastern limb here into the Earth-directed view. It's going to be interesting here to watch this week. Uh, let's see here. Nothing major going on for Storm Prediction Center. I've seen a couple of strikes of lightning outside of Chico here tonight. That's about it. Same threat here over the next couple of days. Nothing major going on as far as severe weather goes. A uh, glance at any... Uh, I'll take a look here at the uh, wind at the lower category. There's some hurricane activity there south of California, way south. It looks like maybe some... Yeah, it's not going to quite reach up there. Looking for activity in the Gulf or maybe around the Atlantic. I just don't see it. That is good news. Um, we are entering into the peak of the hurricane season. September is uh, right now. It's a good start that we're not seeing anything heading this way. All right, uh, seismograph stations out there look pretty darn quiet. Not a whole lot happening there. Not a whole lot of major activity recently, but we'll continue to watch things. Everything's always shuffling around. It does seem like when we get bombarded out here with some protons and elevated flaring activity, the plate tectonics tend to pick up out here. So we'll watch that. Look at this beautiful eruption there. It does look like it shot off a little filament eruption <clears throat> along with that flare. Uh, so, like I said, things will be getting quite busy here in the days ahead. Another newer sunspot back behind that, but this is an area that's currently flaring with some M flare activity. And it's, uh, like I say, it's pretty fancy looking. It's got uh, quite a bit of complexity there within that sunspot region. Quite a bit of trailing going on. A big, huge one. All right, folks, we'll catch you guys out here tomorrow morning for the Tuesday morning update. Have yourself a wonderful evening. Stay safe out there.